Lee has gotten a lot better since her last rerun in Genshin Impact, but in the ever-increasing meta of Fontaine, does she really hold up? How much better are her Farina teams? Are her plunge teams any good? What about Burgeon? Let's talk about whether or not you should wish for Klee, and how to get the most out of her if you do. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. I've already made a really good Klee guide, and Jamie has also made incredible Klee content, he's listed in the description. So I'm not going to worry about covering all the basics for Klee. I really want to hone in on your specific questions. I made a community post asking you guys your most burning questions about Klee, and you guys had some great ones. And for each and every question, if I hadn't already done extensive testing myself, I went and spent hours and hours and hours in the abyss, making sure I could give you educated and well-tested answers to all of your questions. So the first one everyone wants to hear about is Burgeon Klee. The traditional Burgeon Klee is this variant here. Oh, Klee being super short, right there. And Baiju is not a necess necessity in this slot. You can also go with Zhongli or Kirara. All three work just fine and dandy. I wouldn't recommend other characters as much because one way or another, they don't give either enough healing or enough shielding to counterbalance all the Burgeons that your Klee is gonna be hitting from the friendly fire. For Klee, you run Sacrificial Fragments and either Flowers of Paradise Paradise Lost or the Gilded Dreams artifact set on full EM, EM, EM. And this team is very abyss dependent. It's an excellent team for breaking shields. And it was extra good in the Sumeru abysses where they push Dendro. And what do I mean by push Dendro? I mean the blessing of the abyssal moon highly incentivized Dendro reactions, such as right now, plunging attacks deal a shockwave that deals true damage to nearby opponents. So plunging feels better than normal. That's not to say that, you know, plunging is overhyped or something like that or plunging is not as good as people are saying. I think plunging is very good and it will stay very, very good. But currently this is like a secret hidden buff to whatever mechanic that they're pushing. And for a long time, Dendro was pushed. And so Dendro reactions such as Burgeon did extra damage. In addition, the Abyss lineup was specifically tailored to reactions like Burgeon, um, as well as Nilu Bloom. The Abysses were, you know, made perfect for those. Whereas in this current Abyss, yeah, Burgeon cle clears, just like any Burgeon team clears, but it doesn't feel insane like it feels much worse to me than all of her other options not in like not okay maybe not much worse but it feels very noticeably worse than Klee's other team options so I would say that Burgeon Klee is a great team to have in your back pocket it's a great team for when the abyss features maybe some hydro shields because then Dendro is super good at breaking those hydro shields or your cryo shields or a mix of both and because those are really annoying abysses or other elemental shields that's one of Klee's biggest strengths. We'll get into that later. But yeah, overall, I don't recommend Burgeon Klee as just like always good. But if the enemies are, if there's a lot of enemies, because Burgeon is a reaction that benefits heavily when there's lots of enemies, then this is really great. The team also has a lot of flexibility uh, because you don't need to use, you know, Klee's burst. You don't even wa often want to use Klee's burst. Sometimes you do, but often you don't for Burgeon unless you're shield breaking so that you are free to switch into Nahida and reapply her skill for new waves of enemies. You're free to get multiple multiple skills of Baiju to have better energy regen and better healing. So overall, the team has a lot of pros, but it's not like a ceiling team for Klee or anything. A team that I do prefer over Burgeon Klee is like a hybrid team. And so that's where you're going to use Farina over your other Hydro. Now you're not going to get as many Burgeons, but you're going to get a lot more raw Klee damage and you're going to get a lot more Farina damage. So for a team like this, you're going to be using her traditional weapon. So Widseth, Kagura's, Tome of the Eternal Flow. You could use even, I don't even know, maybe Nahida weapon i can't remember if that would be a good idea but like element you can still use sacrificial fragments but it's not as uh potent because like you're still getting the extra skill and you do use the elemental mastery but she's going to be doing a lot of raw damage on this team. And as such, you're going to want to go for a hybrid build. So Elemental Mastery Sands, Elemental Mastery or Pyro Damage, or Attack Goblet and Crit Circlet. I guess if, you're, if, if your Elemental Mastery is a bit lower, then you're going to get better. You're going to get better and better results from the Sacrificial Weapon. Depends on how much EM you have in your substats, how much your Nahid is giving you, what your Baiju buff is maxing out at. Um, this is a team that I definitely recommend Baiju for. Kirara or Zhongli will not 
not work well for this team. You need Baiju to be healing up um, the HP that Farina is draining. So Klee is going to be doing a lot of damage. Nahid is also going to be doing lots of damage on this team because she's also buffed by Farina. And then Klee will be also doing Burgeon. So this team, although it's not as potent to me as her raw damaging teams, um, there is also that low investment value. And in addition, I will say for the pre for the regular Burgeon Klee, there is something to be said about the investment value of your character. I was testing Klee with Kagra's Verity, which to be fair, isn't actually a strict upgrade from the Widsith. The Widsith is a really cracked weapon. I was just testing with Kagura's and Tome of the Eternal Flow because they're more consistent than the Widsith, resetting for the passive and things like that. I didn't want to skew my testing by testing with an unreliable weapon. But strictly speaking, it's not really an upgrade over the Widsith if you play the Widsith correctly. But I also I also was using a very good um, artifact build. My Marish Say Hunter artifact set is very, very good. And yeah, using a high investment weapon and with a really, really good stat line overall, my talent levels are not that invested. So that's one thing. Uh, but she is level 90. So like overall, I could see Burgeon Klee being a better option. Like if you don't have that good of artifacts, being able to slop on EM, EM, EM is a huge boon to a newer account, right? I could easily see a newer a newer account using Burgeon Klee for their first clear because it's going to be easier to hit that floor than it is to hit a higher floor of getting actually cracked artifacts. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So Burgeon Klee, yes, yes-ish, sometimes. Future Jelly here. I just wanted to mention a couple things about Klee in general. So if you're not using Farina, rather than using the Mario Chase artifact set, which I used for most for for the all, all the Farina teams, obviously, you want to go with the two piece two piece. So any beneficial two piece is good. Uh, two piece power damage, two piece attack, either four piece attack, not as good as two piece power damage, but still good. Uh, but you can also do four piece lava walkers, like I talked about in the previous video. If you are doing Burgeon, you can also do four piece Crimson Witch of Flames because it does buff Burgeon damage. So that's just a quick overview on artifacts. If you want to delve into artifacts more, I talked about it in my original Klee video, but that's basically the long and short of it. And I did want to talk a little bit about weapons. So obviously the Fontaine craftable weapon, the catalyst is the best weapon Klee could possibly use it be using for free to plays if you're using Farina on the team because she's because you're gonna be using your elemental skill, you're gonna be easily getting that damage bonus. And sorry, you don't need to be using Farina specifically you just need to have some sort of healer on this team so even building Bennett on a healing build as long as you have enough to max this out then that's going to be Klee's best free-to-play weapon and to be honest there's really no no shame in using this over one of the five-star options or even the Widsith although of course the five-star options and the Widsith are going to be better this is going to be more than enough to hit your minimums and and way beyond for this barrel abyss so I just wanted to make sure that I was throwing out you know the free-to-play options for Klee because she does have them which is great I also did want to just do a little bit of disclaimer. I got pretty decent clears in this abyss. So whenever you're watching my clears, if it's a really insane clear, sometimes I reset it a lot, just like I do in every video, just like every creator does, because we want to show the best clears that we were able to get. But most clears are not as good as the ones that I end up showing. And my artifact set is really good. So that also helps things. But on the other hand, I'm not that practiced with Klee. So I think that the clears could have also been a lot better. So I just wanted to give you a general idea of where, what, what you can expect for yourself based on this is like, like, yeah, if you're using a worse weapon, if you're using worse artifacts, it'll be slower. But if you learn to play her better, then you can do better. So kind of a bit of a give and, give and a take. Is Klee Plunge stupid or cope? No, Klee Plunge is good. I would say similar to Burgeon Klee, Plunge Klee hits a floor really, really good. Whereas Klee's other teams that we'll talk about in a bit have a higher ceiling. And Klee Plunge could be considered more fun. Uh, you're obviously using Shanyun and Farina on Klee Plunge team. So you're gonna be using, again, the Marish Say Hunt artifact set. This artifact set is a really big upgrade. I've seen it calced at a 17 plus percent damage increase over her previous options. Um, she also happens to take advantage of the two piece as well, which is huge. But depending on the plunge team you're using, it can be just a lot smoother to play and feel a lot better to play for a lot of people who find her more traditional play style a little bit on the clunkier side, which I know you can't go through a Klee video on YouTube without hearing the word clunky. This is no exception. Um, I think, you know, the downside for this team is it doesn't really take advantage of Klee's kit and her strengths. She's sort of relegated to, you know, the role of a weaker Diluc or a weaker Hu Tao. I would say this is definitely a team, once again, 
again, that you can keep in your back pocket for really fun, easy clears, especially in single target situations. And then if you want to really max your Klee and really get the most out of her, especially for AOE, then you'll want to go with some of the other teams that we're going to talk about. But overall, I really had a lot of fun with Plunge. I think it's very, very good. As I do for most Plunge teams, they're very, very strong. How does Clearina feel to play compared to Klee Mono Pyro in single target and AoE situations? It's calc to be higher than Mono Pyro for single target, wondering if it's still the case in AoE. So I don't know how it calcs in AoE, but Clearina, that really doesn't roll off the tongue. I don't like that name at all. <laughs> but Farina Klee uh, feels amazing, especially when you're able to get the setups right, which is Farina skill and burst, Bennett burst, you don't want a skill, which you can get away with from Klee's energy regeneration help. And then Cosmo's burst right away and then and then hold skill that's the generally the rotation at least for single target for aoe you have to maybe play around with things a bit more or watch some of jamie's videos on clearina where he talks about how to do those swirl setups but i did those even in aoe and it worked well for me there's a bunch of different things you can do but this team felt excellent uh both in single target and in aoe now granted the aoe in this abyss is you know that two target aoe so maybe it's not a true aoe but when you combine the fact that farina's uh or Klee is applying so much pyro uh, and Farina is applying hydro slower, but in bigger hits, Farina is actually going to be vaping a lot of her hits. And Klee doesn't normally vape, but she's still going to get the pyro swirl from Cosmo when you do the setups correctly. She's going to be taking advantage of Bennett's buff, and it's going to be a pretty long lasting buff as well. And as such, you're going to have very high Klee damage and vape damage from Farina, which, as you might imagine, is a lot more damage than if you just had a Shang Ling on this team, which is her traditional mono pyro setup. So, I love this team. This is definitely my favorite Klee team. Um, I forgot to mention both on this team and with the Farina Klee Burgeon team, you're going to want to run Farina with Elemental Mastery Sands. That way she'll actually be doing more damage with her hits. This team ha also has a lot more room for vertical investment. So if you get, obviously on any Klee team, you can get Klee C2, C4, but being able to work towards Farina C2 or Kazwa C2 and have it actually be much more relevant, especially Farina C2 being the biggest one, this team is really truly insane and it really does feel like a top team of, of Genshin like it feels it feels excellent so how does it feel to play compared to Mono Pyro it feels good I mean I would say that it can be a little bit frustrating sometimes if you miss the setups there's no way to check in the abyss whether you got your double swirl setups or not that's super annoying so you kind of have to practice it outside of the abyss then go into the abyss to actually do it and hope that it's working and there's no way to really tell unless like you know the numbers to look for of course but it that can be a bit frustrating Frustrating. But even if you miss your setups and you only swirl either Hydro or Pyro, you're still doing a ton of damage. And unless you're going for speedrun clears, you're still going to clear the content just fine. Of course, again, being able to run clear on the better artifact set is really, really big. Um, this is one of the better teams. It's probably the team that keeps Klee in the higher tiers of DPSs today. You don't have to use Causeway here. You can use Shang Ling. And I think the biggest pro about using Shang Ling here is that you don't have to swirl. And I think that that alone is such a huge pro for so many players. Swirling is a pain in the butt. You don't know, like I was talking about earlier, if your swirls worked correctly, if you got your damage bonus, if you got your VV on both, um, if you got the right order. This, it just doesn't matter. You start with Farina, you use Bennett Burst, you use Shang Ling Burst, and you can go to town on Klee. Klee's energy regeneration um, makes it so that even if you don't spend the time to funnel Bennett's skill into Shang Ling, which it's a kind kind of can be a good idea and using Shangling skill because it kind of wastes Bennett uptime that you want to be spending on Klee. It's all fine because Klee is helping restore energy. You still need a lot of energy on Shangling, of course. And my Farina is generally on Fav because I haven't bothered to fish for the pipe yet, which I should, but it is what it is. Um, this team is, I think it's the best simple team for Klee. Like you, you're also doing a lot of damage from Farina's vapes. So, you know, if you miss some jump cancels, if you miss some charge attacks, it, that should have been, you know, they should have been charge attacks, but they were normal attacks. It's not as big of a deal because Farina is doing a lot of damage. Shangling is doing a lot of damage. The damage profile is more spread out across the team. 
uh, which which is really really nice uh my shangling by the way is 227 er she's using the catch and an energy recharge sands my bet is on instructors you don't really want to be on instructors you get more damage but you want to build them on hp 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 for five star artifacts to get more healing probably no bless is gonna be your best i forgot to change them off unfortunately so my my clears can be a little bit scuffed but i'm not here for the fastest clears ever it worked fine you know worked totally fine for me so yeah this is like the team i would recommend to like a beginner clee enthusiast who wants to see their clee pop off and then i'd recommend kazua for when 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 enemies being grouped is more valuable in this abyss they start pretty close together already and they can't very easily be grouped but for times when grouping is valuable kazua is extremely good and is the higher team ceiling overall so yeah this is a great a great alternative and i highly uh, recommend it especially for the beginner clee enthusiast or just the masher we're all i'm a masher at heart Is there any viable way to make Klee reverse vaporize? Maybe a double hydro, and if that doesn't work, C2 Elon with C6 Singcho work. Um, I think your most reliable way to, to for Klee to always vaporize her hits is to actually run a Shanyan Farina team with Yalan, something like this. The problem with a team like this is this team is annoying to play because you have to weave in normal attacks. And unlike with Hu Tao, it's not super intuitive to use normal attacks after doing a plunge with a catalyst. You'd rather just dash and plunge again and not weave in normal attacks. So for that reason, I'm not a, the biggest fan of this version of the plunge team, but Klee will vaporize all of her hits. I suppose you could vapor, probably vaporize all of her hits if you do something like this. This doesn't have a healer though. Um, C2 Elon plus for, plus Singcho. I don't know if this would work. I have a feeling that Klee still applies too much pyro, especially from her burst. It's unless maybe maybe if you're using Kazua and you're infusing his burst, but then you're not using a healer and you're using Klee. So I think that the best way is still plunge. I think it's much smarter to use a vaporized team where she's the one applying the pyro and then the hydro unit is doing the vaping. What units would work the best for a Klee burn team? If a dedicated burn unit come out, could this help Klee? What kind of unit would you like to see help her out? I think the problem with burn is that Klee's HP is very, very low. So for example, on the first uh, the first chamber, you can easily just get one-shotted by the aliens that summon that burning aura or the dendro aura and, just, and you've got Bennett, Bennett applied to you and you can just easily die um, and you just get one shot. So I don't think burning Klee is a great idea because she's very squishy and very liable to get one shot. I think if we got a dedicated burning unit, that added some defensive utility that like you were immune to burn or you took way less damage from burn or maybe you burning also hurt the enemy or something like that something to uh, make it so you weren't so punished from burning yourself i think that could help and obviously we need a damage buff because burning itself is kind of low low damage she applies so much pyro any teams that actually take advantage of this instead of being punished for it that would be that would be the farina one her applying as much power as she does allows farina to get very consistent vapes so that's good <laughs> you'll want to run attack sends on Klee because she won't be vaping at all. It'll be all Farina. I haven't seen many people do Chevy teams with Klee. I never got her, sadly. Always wanted a little Terra since the start of the game, but never got lucky. Chevy, Klee, Beto. Um, I played a bunch of Chevy's teams with Klee. Um, Chevy, Klee, Beto was pretty good. Um, I also liked uh, Klee, Fischl, Yaimiko. I also liked Shangling, Yaimiko. Um, I didn't like Fischl with Bennett as much. Um, I think these teams are pretty good. Klee, again, doesn't vaporize a ton of her hits, so she has nice synergy with these teams. I think the biggest downside is that I kind of just prefer Yaimiko on field teams here. Um, so like something like this, something like this, or of course, Raiden teams. I much prefer, I prefer Raiden Chevrolet teams the most. And it just seems like the Electro teams just generally feel better than the Klee ones. But I will say between, um, between Klee and Chevrolet, you actually do get enough energy for Shangling because Klee does have her passive that regenerates some energy. So I, it's, still good i like I, I like it if you want to play this or it fits in the abyss or you have these characters free um you definitely can it's definitely i would say it's a bit worse than it feels a bit worse than mono pyro and noticeably worse than clearina but still good somewhere around the burgeon or maybe the farina burgeon variant we already talked about plunge clee and for shimanawa paired with benny kazoo yulan i don't recommend shimanawa uh because you lose please burst which is very big for her damage and benny kazoo yulan i highly recommend changing yulan for um for Farina because Yolan, and then you can use Mari Chasse, uh, because Yolan won't vaporize very many of her hits. Her hits are much faster than Farina, and so she'll only vaporize occasionally. 
Her usage feels very clunky because she's a short character with short range attack, with limited mobility, and extremely squishy. Any of countermeasures aside from Zhongli. Um, so you can dash cancel, you can jump cancel. If you you want to jump, you want to by default you want to jump cancel. Her jump cancels are very simple. They're not anything crazy. I think the biggest thing about them is that they feel weird at first. Like you're doing her attack and it like you're kind of you're you're doing your attack and then you're jumping and the animations just don't feel like crazy satisfying and very and they don't feel super obvious like it definitely feels like an old designed character and it's, it's definitely easy to accidentally just dash to move around so you want to get used to just walking so you can save your stamina for these jump cancels and it's also kind of unclear when you can start your next charge attack um so sometimes like i'll end up just i'll input the next charge attack too soon and i'll end up just sort of standing there like an idiot and that doesn't feel very good so that's where i think this feeling of clunkiness comes from is is it sometimes it's not clear when you can start your next charge attack and as such i definitely recommend something like doing normal attack charge attack jump cancel and then normal attack and when you see the animation come out for the normal attack that's when you know you can start out start your charge attack the problem is it's still kind of annoying to charge attack like it doesn't feel that great it doesn't feel that fun to me um so despite it being powerful and strong especially like in the abyss where you can get knocked out of your jump and things like that it, it, it doesn't feel that great you can get used to it and i'm sure you know the more you play the more you get used to it but after playing you know a lot of newer characters and different characters that have different um cancels and different mobility options it definitely feels dated and annoying for me so i definitely recommend before you get her make sure you try her in the trial and you find it cute because I could see you know I, I could see finding finding it cute and finding it fun but for me it's just not super satisfying also for being very squishy she is squishy right it is definitely a downside um you know if you look at her HP we've got 16,000 HP Chevrolet 20,000 Shangling 15,000 also pretty squishy Yamiko pretty squishy what's right in 20,000 Ayaka 13 oh god no artifact makes sense none of my characters have artifact 20,000 for Navia so she's about you know 25 percent squishy squishier than most other DPSs and because her kind of walk and run speed is slower it feels feels noticeably worse is that a deal breaker I mean that depends on you for me it didn't stop me from having fun with her and it didn't stop me from getting great clears with her so if you like her you can definitely make it work oh we're into the build section now ah that explains that so I don't think that it should stop you but it should you should pause and make sure that you actually really want to play the character so yeah um, other build stuff we've kind of talked about builds a lot as we went on um if you're using farina and you're doing charge attacks tome of the eternal flow is really really excellent for her i think it can be considered her best in slot um in those situations uh kagra's verity is a great general option because you're you, you're often going to want to use your your skills i also something i also did is some on some teams you can open your rotation by starting with your two jumpy dumpties and then that starts starts to build the stacks for your kagras and it also saves you bennett uptime later on gets you a bit of front loaded damage you're going to get slightly lower damage on her skills themselves, but it can be worth it um, for the time saving trade off. You get more charge attacks in your Bennett circle and you get more, you get your more stacks earlier for Kagura's. You're going to get another jumpy dumpty later on in your rotation. So overall, I, it depends on the team, whether it's worth it or not. I highly recommend, you know, if you're really into min maxing like that, check out more of Jamie's content, check out some clay speed runs on, on YouTube and things like that. Um, but one, I guess final, final thoughts on sincerely a clean enjoyer who's unable to use her much i just recommend watching other people clear like watch my clears watch jamie's clears watch other clears on youtube and see what they're doing see if that looks fun to you and then try and emulate that But the next question is, how does she compare to D Luke, Hu Tao, and Linny in practice? So to me, it's like this: Hu Tao feels the best. This is not like an official tier list, by the way. It's just how these guy characters feel in relation to one another. So Hu Tao feels the best, then Linny. I do think Linny is cracked, by the way, because I didn't just test Klee, by the way. I also busted back out my Linny to test him in Farina teams. I busted out Yanfei, who I had never tested before, so I learned how to play Yanfei for this video, just for 
for this video as well because I wanted to make sure I could compare her to Yanfei because there's gonna be questions as well, right? So I, I tested them all for this video and I spent a bunch of time on it. So I, I think that, yeah, Hu Tao feels the best, then Linny, but they feel in the same tier. Klee to me feels worse. Uh, Plunge Diluc, I'm not sure. He definitely feels worse than Klee. I don't know if it's in the same or the lower tier. I think maybe something like this, maybe like this for C6 gomming. I think I would call it something, something here. Now, this is not to say that Diluc feels like a B, like the Plunge play style is super, super good. This is just in relation to each other. This is how they feel in terms of strength to me. How does she compare with Hu Tao? I love Hu Tao a lot, and it would be a good change of pace to have another pyro damage dealer. If I were to pull for Klee, would I have the same level of comfort and fun as I would with Hu Tao? Personally, I don't think so. I don't generally recommend, I personally wouldn't recommend anyone goes for Klee unless they really love Klee specifically. Although I think her Farina team is excellent. I just feel like that Linny is on another level. Now, I will also point out that my Linny is very well built, not on purpose. He uses the same artifact set, but I also have a signature weapon and he has one more talent level on his on his charge attack. But my but but then but then again, you know, my Klee is using her best five star weapons as well. And my Klee is level 90. So, you know, there's a bit of give and take there. But I personally feel like Linny is just on a different level. I think especially his front load, his nuke potential, you know, stacking up those arrows and using his skill to explode them is just so 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 good and it feels really really satisfying it feels maybe the maybe he's the most satisfying character to play out of all these characters i think it can be tricky to use him uh without a shielder but i was able to do it um using controller so you know, I I think that they both have some pros and cons, and I I think that Klee Klee is much is very strong enough that you don't have to worry about like oh I don't have the strongest power DPS I'm gonna struggle to clear content. No, Klee is very exceptionally strong and very underrated with how strong she is. I just think if you're actually gonna compare her to the other characters, she lands more in the middle than to the top. Um, this person says that their team Klee teams are better in AOE but worse in single target. The thing about that is yes, technically it's true. She does have better. AoE even than Linny, um, but Linny does his nukes do hit an AoE. So in practice, his AoE is actually really good. And Hu Tao's plunges are actually very impressive in the AoE that they actually hit in, like surprisingly large AoE. So like her AoE potential is not nearly as bad as you would think. And because she just gets so much damage, I've been using her plunge teams the most. Uh, I'm sure if you have C1, then her dash cancels are still very good for a lot of scenarios. But personally, even AoE, I would just recommend, you know, going for Shen Yun for Hu Tao. Um, and if you really want another Pyro DPS, which you already have Shang Ling. So I don't think you need like an AoE Pyro DPS when you already have Shang Ling. You know, maybe I'd recommend, you know, maybe ride in with Chevrus, right? And then you can do Shang Ling and then you have an AoE Pyro Electro kind of team going on. But it may be, maybe Linny. How is Klee compared to other DPS units in terms of damage, teammates? What are her weaknesses in terms of enemies? I think her weaknesses are enemies that require you to dodge a lot are probably it's going to hurt hurt into her stamina and make it so her cancels are harder to do if you can time your dodges and make your dash cancel and you can dash when you be canceling your jump normally when you be normally be jump canceling but you can dash to avoid an attack and cancel your charge attack that can be nice but that's definitely her weakness i would say is enemies that like do big damage to our little squishy squishy girl but it's not something that can't be worked around i'd say her biggest weakness is just that there's other really strong characters characters. So it's not so much that she's weak. It's just that there's other great options as well. So she's like, she's good enough that you'll never want her power, but she's not going to be up there with the ceiling DPSs. So I'd say one level below all the best DPSs where I would put, you know, Novalette, Hu Tao, Linny, Navia, I put all those and etc. into one tier and Klee would be in a tier below that. Clean upgrade for Linny teams from Shang Ling. So on the Yanfei thing, I found Yanfei cleared slower, but my Yanfei is not full ascended and her talents are not that great but i found that yanfei giving herself a shield i found yeah and also like just the sound design and the animations and how fluid the gameplay of yanfei felt versus klee i enjoyed playing yanfei more personally i do have her c6 i was using the same artifact set and i was using her best in slot tome of the eternal flow i think klee is a stronger character than yanfei but i i enjoyed playing yanfei more
using Klee in a Linny team. Just like the commenter replied, I'd only recommend her replacing Shengling if you have C2, if not C4. And I agree. Um, the Jumpty Dumpty is decreasing the opponent's defense by 23% for 10 seconds is really big, actually. Like, the, that's a pretty big defense ignore, uh, both for Klee herself and for the teammates she's supporting. I won't go into how to maximize that. Jamie has this C2. So if, you know, if you want to learn about, you know, how to get the most out of it, he's in the description. Um, but I wouldn't use him in Linny team as a, her, in a Linny team as a battery because she's mostly good for batterying Shangling. Like that's kind of where her best battery potential is, is lowering the ER requirements for your Shangling. So that's the thing. You know, is Klee good for new players? I have Yaimiko and Yoimiya. I would not generally recommend Klee for new players unless you just really like Klee. I wouldn't dissuade anyone from getting Klee. I just would make sure that you like her play style from the trial. I would say there's a lot of characters that I would recommend before Klee to new players. What does Klee bring the table that other power DPSs don't, even in regards to what other supports work well? Let's see what this person says. A lot of power application, meaning she can destroy shields a lot faster. True. This is something that Klee is the best at. She applies a ton of pyro so she does destroy shields faster Farina can easily forward vape her attacks yes although that can also be done with Linny, and it's arguably better overall with Linny. i don't know for sure if it calcs that way or if in my testing for me testing Linny in this abyss you know what what else can i do um Linny is just at a higher level so i would say the second point not a huge fan of high poise damage meaning she can juggle enemies yes but I wouldn't say that this is, it is good. It's nice that she can juggle enemies for sure. I would say that it's something that definitely mitigates her, you know, clunkiness that we talked about earlier. I should have talked about it earlier on, but here we're clicking on it now. Her burst snapshots, yes, that's nice, but it's not something that other power DPSs don't necessarily have. It's just, it's nice. Attacks and heavy attacks, meaning she can destroy geo shields. True, she can also mine, nice. She can constantly power pyro thanks to being catalyst user. Yes, which makes her good in virgin. Yeah, it's not that Klee is maybe like never the best choice or she never she is always outperformed by other characters, but you don't have the luxury to get like every single limited pyro DPS. If you were to get one pyro DPS, I would choose either Linny or Hu Tao, and I would not choose Klee. Game plan and strengths to specifically other pyros, Yanfei, Diluc, and Yoimiya. How much of a damage loss is animationless cancel Klee? Uh first of all, how much of an animation how much of a loss is it? I think it's between between a fifteen and a 30% DPS loss on Klee, depending on the team, because sometimes she's doing a majority of the team's damage, sometimes she's doing less. So it's a pretty big damage loss to not animation cancel. But fortunately, again, animation canceling with her isn't that hard. Like, is that, you know, is that really that hard? It's something that you can get used to pretty quickly. It's definitely not, like, I think the animation diff cancel difficulty isn't overrated in terms of how bad it feels. It's mostly the small body type and the way the charge attacks don't come out right away to me like the timing that feels clunky not so much the animation cancel itself hopefully that makes sense <coughs> other questions when will Klee be tried for multiple accounts of arson and attack on Mondstadt underwater ecosystem I like this response based on how powerful her mother probably is Klee will not face any charges true is she weak against the new Fontaine mecha enemies due to their movement speed and higher knockback resistance I found that she did stagger the mecha enemies so good uh, uh, the Aramites, however, when they have their Pokemon summoned, it seemed like she didn't stun them. So mileage may vary. Does Klee still need to use the cancel moves or is she better as a burst user? Uh, you need to stay on field with her for 10 seconds. <coughs> For her burst to actually take effect, you can see that the duration is 10 seconds and it's canceled if she goes off field. So um, you do need to use the animation cancels. But, you know, again, I think plunge Klee is a great option for those who want to play Klee and don't want to do the traditional animation cancels. I find those are very smooth as well as it feels fun for her to turn into a bomb herself. So it still kind of feels on brand, which is nice. Ask Zajef, ask Jello, hmm, oddly similar. True, I got this idea from Zajef, good idea. How do you like Klee as a character? Pure curiosity, I'll admit. I think she's a great character. I think she's super cute. <coughs> um, I'm not the biggest fan of child model characters, but I think she's great. I think she's cute. I think she's got fun lore with her mom. I, but I definitely will say my favorite thing about Klee is if you want to see where Klee shows up on my tier list, check out my video right there. And if you like what we're doing, please subscribe it really helps out the channel. It is a ton of work to build and test every single character. I think you'd be shocked at how much time I spend playing all these characters to make sure I can give good, honest feedback on how strong I think they feel and how much time I research into the theory crafting and numbers behind it. So I really appreciate all the support. Thank you very much. Bye for now.